with the rising popularity of pedal-based power meters, I thought I'd cover this one today in a video. So if you're an owner of these pedal-based power meters or you're looking to buy a set in the near future, you'll be across what needs to be set to get the most accurate power out of your new power meter. First of all, just backing up a little bit on why these power meters are becoming a popular choice. Well, I think there's a few reasons for that. First of all, there's a number now to choose from on the market. We have the Vector 3s, we have the Favero Asiomas, we have the PowerTap P1P2s and the SRM Exacts. So there's a few out there to choose from. Secondly, the installation of these is very, very easy. They're just like putting on a pair of pedals, well, with the exception of one of these. But other than that, anyone can do this very simply with some simple tools. Compatibility-wise, these are also the easiest to go with because there's no researching bottom bracket types, spiders, chain rings, frame clearance issues. They're just pedals and they're pretty much compatible with all bikes. Most of these also come in under a thousand US dollars, which is reasonably priced when talking about power meters. And lastly, they're accurate and reliable. Yeah, Vector 3 owners, I know, I know, I've got a set too, but these replacement units are okay now. And by accurate and reliable, I mean accurate and reliable enough at a consumer level for us to get the most out of our training. Okay, now onto the important details from this video today, and that is after installation of these pedals, you need to set the correct crank length for your bike to get the most accurate numbers out of these power meters. Why do we need to set the crank length? Well, I won't go into all the math here, but the pedals do need to know the length of the crank they're installed on to give you correct power. The crank length configuration is stored on the pedals themselves, and there are two places to set that. First of all, you can set it within the mobile app for the pedal. So for example, here is the Garmin Connect app configuring the Vector 3s. Here's the Favero app configuring the Asiomas. And here is the PowerTap app configuring the P1s slash P2s. And you only need to set that once. You set it once on one pedal and it will transfer over to the other, in theory. Usually that works just fine. Now you use that configuration if you're gonna be using your power meter pedals for something like Zwift or Trainer Road or other software that doesn't have that configuration of the device in there to set the crank length. So it needs to know from somewhere. It's gotta come from the pedals. So once that's set, you're good to go. However, if like the rest of us or most of us, you're configuring a Garmin or a Wahoo head unit with this new power meter, these also do something interesting. You need to set the correct crank length on these. It will default to 172.5 with both of these and whatever is set in these will override and overwrite the pedals. Be aware of that. Once your power pedals are paired to a Garmin unit, you just go through the menus, the device settings and set the crank length in there, making sure it's correct for the bike that it's on. That will then send that to the pedals, away you go, happy days. Also do a zero offset while you're there. The Wahoo head units also do this, but it's via their companion app. So just loading that app up next to me here, I will connect to my Roam, which is connected to my Asiomas, and I'll show you the screen here. So we go down to sensors, setup sensors, we have the Asiomas set there and it's configured crank length and we just scroll down and set the crank length to the bike here. So there are our options, 165 through to 180 at the moment. And whatever I set there will be sent to the pedals and stored on the pedals. So that's the catch, gotcha, something you do need to know. And finally, how important is this to have your crank length set right for your pedal-based power meters? Well, it's about 1.5% per crank length increment. So definitely worth doing to squeeze that accuracy or the precision down enough to make sure you're confident in the power numbers that you're getting from your power meter pedals. In other words, definitely do it. Definitely do it on your head units because that will then write down to the pedals. Anyway, there we go. Reminder from me, hot tip, get it crank length set correctly and away you go. Happy days. Thanks for watching this one. Remember to hit subscribe to support what I'm up to here and we'll be back with more soon.